Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop and this Workshop Notes video number 17. Now you may recall a while ago I made a Gothic bench and this one was designed for the outdoors and it's been outdoors for I think it's about five or six years now. I'll put the exact <laughs> date on the screen when I look it up. Uh, and it's had uh, just two coats of Osmo and it's not been touched in all that time. It's been outside rain and winter. So I've had a query about the uh, Path Superdogs. Uh, someone said that their saw is colliding with the Path Superdog when they uh, use it. Um, I've tested it and that's not the case, but I want to demonstrate it in this video. Next is Festool Hoses. Festool have now introduced a new type of hose. Now, a long time ago when I was talking about the two Festool Domino machines, uh, I mentioned the reference blocks that I'd created. And basically what I did uh, with each of the uh, Domino machines was to take a block of wood and then create a series of slots with different size cutters and at different uh, slot widths. I also tested the slot depth. The, the one thing that I would say is you don't need to try out different depths. Uh, just always reckon that your domino uh, slot is going to be about two millimeters deeper than the setting uh, on the machine and that's to allow glue at the end of the domino. Uh, however, the widths are important because if you're planning uh, a series of joints, particularly if there's more than one domino side by side or close to each other, then you do need to know the width of the slots. Now for the underside and these uh, awkward uh, sort of bits, I'm using the DTS uh, 400 uh, and I've put in some 120 grit. This hardly needs any touching up at all, but now I'll give it a light sand. <laughs> Now I hope you can see just how easy it is to get into these corners all the way in uh, with the Delta sander. There's just a tiny little bit of rot here. Any garden bench that sits out in the rain all the time uh, is going to start to get rot where it touches the ground. Uh, now I could try and cut all this out uh, and perhaps fill it with some epoxy but actually I'm not too worried because it's only going in a little way. Uh, I'm going to leave it as it is. Now the actual bench top is actually seen all the worst of the weather. And what was happening was it was in a dark corner of the garden. Uh, the rain would fall, the water would sit on the surface uh, and it wouldn't get any sunlight. So uh, I'm going to use, uh, now I've got some 80 grit here. <laughs> Now, I could be using my RO80, that's the big uh, Rotex sander for this, but I wanted to show that this ETS EC150, and this has got the 3mm stroke, I wanted to show that it could actually tackle some pretty tough jobs. And I'm now going to put a piece of 120 grit on here, and then I'm going to give it a final go. Now, so far, this has taken me about 25 minutes uh, to do everything so far, including the delta sanding. So just a little bit more to do, and then we're done. Now, I have to keep reminding myself, this is an outdoor bench made from oak that I found in a skip. I'm going to put a screw in the end of each of these feet. Now the Osmo that I'm using is this 425 Oak Transparent and it's got UV protection in it and this is the original tin that I used all those years ago. And when I opened it I was a little bit sceptical, I thought oh I wonder whether it's formed a skin on top and it has not. I've given it a really good stir, so I'm going to start with the underneath and then finish the top. Now ordinarily with the Osmo that I used for interior work like PolyX, PolyX Gloss, um, I suggest that it's put on really thinly and, uh, and you build it up in more coats than Osmo themselves say. But in the case of these outdoor protection, you've got to follow Osmo's instructions and put it on, not liberally, but uh, in a nice, even, but not too thick a coat. Uh, and I, I think you'll, you'll, you'll get a feel for it the way it goes on. And uh, the main thing is that because it's got colour in it, uh, you want to keep it even. Right, I've done all the underside and once I'm happy I'll then turn that over so I've moved the can out of the way. Now I've got gloves on. Now I've got uh, Osmo on these gloves so I'm just gonna get a new pair. Well it's looking good. I'll just do the 
the top now. Now I'm really pleased with that, that was just one coat. Now it's now uh, just gone five to six uh, in the evening. At three o'clock this afternoon I was still driving back from London. I got back to the house uh, at about half past three and had a cup of tea. I then came into the workshop and in less than two hours I set everything up, did all the sanding, set the video up and all that sort of thing uh, and I've put the first coat of Osmo on. That's not bad is it, eh? Well that's it, that's the second coat on and it's dry enough for me to touch. I'll, I'll give it another uh, 12 hours or so before I pop it in the car to take it back to London. Uh, but no, that's really, really good. And it was really the top which uh, just needed that uh, uh, work doing on it. Now, there's one thing that I just say about Osmo. Do read the instructions as far as uh, the sanding goes. Uh, now, with this particular product, uh, this is the 425 Oak uh, Transparent. Uh, it says, do not go any finer than 120 grit. A person wrote to me the other day and said they were having problems with their polyex on some flooring because it had gone cloudy. And on the tin of the polyex, it says, if it's for flooring, uh, sand between 100 and 150 grit. If it's for furniture, you can go up to 240 grit. Well, this was flooring and he had gone to 320 grit and it was far too fine uh, for the polyex to settle into the surface of the wood and it left a very slightly cloudy, milky sort of finish. Uh, he's rectified that and, and now he's absolutely happy. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with the UJK Path Superdog, which can be configured in three ways uh, on your bench top, uh, perhaps like the original tall path dog. Uh, the way I have it now where it's got this little chamfered shoulder or as a plain dog. Well, I quite like using it with the chamfered shoulder because you then have a completely uh, smooth shaft all the way down to the bench. Now, I've got my uh, MFG3 set up now with uh, a pair of PATH Superdogs here uh, and just out of sight, uh, there's a third one there. So now I'm forming the perfect right angle. My guide rail is held onto these two super dogs here. My wood is pushed against this one and that one and the track is held in place with the UJK rail clips and so now I could do a perfect right angle cut. And the issue that was reported was that the motor housing here of the TS55 uh, would interfere uh, with the PATH super dog before the cut was complete. Well, I, I've set this up to prove that's not the case. And in fact, this person has uh, since realized that he was making a mistake in another way. Uh, anyway, so here we go. I'm now at the end of the cut here. And if you look closely, although uh, it does appear to be close, I can slide my finger underneath there between the motor housing and the top of that super dog with no problem whatsoever. However, if you put one of the tall uh, PATH super dogs in this position, which I've now done, uh, then at the very end of the cut, and I am about uh, a quarter of an inch away from the end of the cut here, uh, then this will interfere with the housing. And, and this tall PATH super dog is designed for thicker lumps of wood. So you've got the guide rail up at this sort of height here. That's something to bear in mind uh, when you're setting up, uh, say, 18mm MDF, as I've got here. However, on my track saw cutting station, the way I set it up is that I have uh, whatever dog is here in a row of its own. And then the next row along, I put uh, the row of dogs that I'm going to push my wood up against. And even if you've got the tall path super dog there, uh, that means you can easily get to the end of a cut without any interference whatsoever. Now, I've recently taken delivery of a 5 meter, uh, 27 millimeter hose, and it's under here. It's in the garage area of this CT26 extractor. And now I'll take that away, and now you can see uh, the 27 millimeter hose. And this is a 5 meter hose. Someone asked me whether the 5 metre hose would fit in, and the answer is yes it does. For years we've been used to hoses uh, like this one, and this is a 36 millimetre 
uh, festal hose, uh, and it's got sort of ribbing here. And that ribbing forms a particular function. It's spiral wound. That means it goes in one continuous uh, journey all the way to the end. Uh, and it gives uh, the hose some flexibility. It allows it to uh, turn quite tight corners. But it, it's a little bit unmanageable in many ways. But the, the worst element of it is, if I put it on this TS55 now, and what I'm going to do is to just simulate a cut along here. So there I would be going down here. And right from the start, the hose is catching on the edge of the bench here. And I'm sure you can see that effect. And it's so been so bad that normally I would have the hose dangling from one of my bungees on the ceiling. And that overcomes the problem. But Festal now have overcome this. And it's one of the new hoses that Festool are issuing with their extractors. And you can buy them in all sorts of lengths from their website or from your dealer. And this has a, a smooth outer surface. And yet it's just as bendy. In fact, I would say it's probably a little bit more bendy than the original. And this is a great improvement on its predecessors. I'll just attach it to my saw here. So here we go. I've I've placed that in the lower position there, so it's going to definitely try and rub along there. And look, smooth, smooth as anything. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. If you're buying a Festal uh, extractor today, it will come with a new hose. And finally, I don't know if someone's setting me up to do this as a joke, but I've been asked about what I keep in my Festal toolbox. Now, this is a toolbox that I take with me any time I'm going away to do a job for uh, one of the members of the family or whatever it might be. And so here's a very quick run through what I have. Various screws and various lengths, tape measure, my uh, detecting metal objects in walls, make sure I don't do pipes, lots of screwdriver bits. And here I've got some nice little selection of various drill bits in there. Electrical screwdriver uh, to detect uh, mains electricity in a wall. Uh, I've got a, a junior hacksaw, some very fine pliers. Uh, one of those uh, absolutely brilliant screwdrivers. Uh, this is made by Weha and I bought this uh, from uh, Axminster and it's got the most super duper way of holding the bits. When you open it up, uh, the bits are all presented to you and when you close it, the bits turn and there they go. And that's really useful to have that in the workbox. I've got a scraper, I've got a hammer, uh, I've got a, a, one of those small spirit levels. And on this side, picture hooks, some electrical items, uh, spare fuses, things like that, uh, some Allen keys, um, super glue, a lighter in case I'm having to set light to something, a torch. And uh, when I went to one of the shows not so long ago, uh, I went to the Bessie stand and they gave me some Bessie plasters and I keep those in there. <laughs> that was full once upon a time. Uh, yes, yeah, so lots of little nicks in the fingers. I've got a little baby calculator uh, for working out uh, whatever it might be. Now these are not real matches. These are uh, just ordinary match sticks with no combustible head on them. Uh, if you're taking screws out uh, from something and uh, you need to make a proper job uh, when you put the screws back in again, uh, fill the screw holes with a, a dab of glue uh, and a matchstick. Trim it off flush and away you go. Lots of raw plugs in there, some more screws. Down here I've got a little uh, multimeter. Uh, I've got some uh, electrical tape. I've got some uh, plumber's tape there. Little baby Bosch drill driver thing. Uh, it's, this, this is almost a toy really, but it does actually do the job. Here I've got some safety glasses and a little mirror. Uh, now it's not for me to comb my hair. Uh, that's to see under or through corners. Very useful with the torch if you're looking underneath an appliance uh, to see a model number or whatever it might be. Uh, and uh, then I've got my ordinary reading glasses in a case. Well, that's it now. We've done the Osmo, done the bench. It's dry now, two coats. Uh, don't forget, don't go over 120 grit with the outdoor stuff. And I've discussed what's in my toolbox. I've done the domino blocks, the reference blocks. We've gone through the business with the PAF Super Dogs. And of course, there's the new Festal Hose, which I call the snake. And it's got me again.